Welcome to Australia Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. Australia needs to rethink its approach to its Pacific Island neighbors. What tennis reveals about AI's impact on human behavior. Japan's nominal GDP outgrows China's for first time in 46 years. Just doing his job, Australia PM makes firmest call yet for Assange's freedom. Harris Ralph's central contract terminated by Pakistan Cricket Board. Australia needs to rethink its approach to its Pacific Island neighbors. Economist. China's growing influence in the Pacific Islands is causing concern for Australia. China has been wooing Pacific leaders with infrastructure and investment, and has been successful in gaining political influence in countries such as the Solomon Islands, Kiribati, and Nauru. Australia is worried about China securing resources, buying political influence, and seeking military access in the region. However, Australia's response has been criticized for being heavy-handed, and its concerns may be overblown. Australia's aid to the Pacific Islands still far surpasses that of China, and it offers education opportunities, technical assistance, and sports diplomacy, which China lacks. To counter China, Australia should broaden its horizons and focus on the island state's priorities, such as development and climate change. What tennis reveals about AI's impact on human behavior. Economist. Behavioral economist David Almag has examined the effect of the Hawkeye ball tracking system on tennis umpires' decision-making. The system, which is used at most elite tournaments, has led to human officials making 8% fewer mistakes, according to Almag and his colleagues. However, they found the introduction of the AI technology caused officials to call serves that were out, in. Almag suggested the findings could be applied to other fields, such as medicine, as algorithms increasingly overrule human judgment. Japan's nominal GDP outgrows China's for first time in 46 years. Nikkei Asia. Japan's nominal GDP growth rate surpassed that of China for the first time since 1977, according to preliminary 2023 GDP figures released by Japan's cabinet office. Japan's economy showed nominal growth of 5.7%, while China's grew by 4.6%. This reversal occurred as Japan is starting to turn inflationary, while China is experiencing deflationary pressure. China's slowing nominal GDP growth implies negative GDP deflator and suggests subdued general price levels, according to economists. The deflationary pressure in China is likely to continue and exert downward pressure on global prices, according to analysts. Just doing his job, Australia PM makes firmest call yet for Assange's freedom. South China Morning Post. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese and other federal lawmakers have voted overwhelmingly to call on the United States and Britain to release Julian Assange ahead of a hearing next week that will determine his chances of an appeal against extradition to the US. On Wednesday, in his firmest call yet for Assange's release, Albanese and 85 other members of the House of Representatives voted to support a motion to end Assange's incarceration that stemmed from him doing his job as a journalist to reveal evidence of misconduct by the US. Opposition leader Peter Dutton and 41 members of his party voted against the motion. In Parliament on Thursday, Albanese followed up on his vote with a message to the US that the Australian government had a responsibility to make representations for its citizens, as it had done previously. In recent times, it is important that we have a calibrated and deliberate approach to this engagement, he said. Assange's High Court hearing in Britain next week has already whipped up a media frenzy. The court will determine whether Assange has exhausted all appeals. The UN Special Rapporteur on Torture said last week that if Assange was extradited to the US, he would be at risk of treatment amounting to torture or other forms of ill-treatment or punishment. Haris Rauf's central contract terminated by Pakistan Cricket Board. Al Jazeera. The Pakistan Cricket Board, PCB, has terminated the central contract of fast bowler Haris Rauf after he refused to join the test team for the tour of Australia. Rauf had chosen to play in Australia's Big Bash League, BBL, instead. The PCB stated that Ralph's refusal was a violation of his contract and that he would not be granted permission to play in any foreign leagues until June 30, 2024. Ralph has played in T20 franchise leagues in Bangladesh and the United States, and has only played one test match for Pakistan. The PCB allowed Ralph to make a limited appearance in the BBL before joining the national squad for a T20 series against New Zealand. Ralph's selection for the New Zealand series was part of the build-up to the 2024 T20 World Cup. Pakistan's next matches include a four-game T20 series against England and the 2024 T20 World Cup. Fighting talk and more missiles, is it war for Kim Jong-un? The Sydney Morning Herald. North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un has recently ramped up his threats and missile tests, causing concern among experts who fear that his next step may be actual conflict. 
Kim has abandoned his family's long-stated goal of peaceful unification with South Korea and has declared South Korea a primary foe and invariable principal enemy. Some experts believe that Kim may have made a strategic decision to go to war, which would be the most dangerous situation on the Korean peninsula since 1950. However, others believe that Kim's recent actions are reversible and that he may be trying to goad the South Korean government into retaliating. The situation on the Korean peninsula is tense, and any provocation could escalate quickly. When the British car industry got it right. Telegraph. The Austin and Morris 11-1300, also known as the ADO-16, celebrated its 50th anniversary this year since the last vehicle rolled off the production line. The car was a major success, becoming the UK's best-selling car from 1964 to 1971, except for 1967 when it was beaten by the Ford Cortina. The car was also popular in other countries such as the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Italy, and France. Nearly 1,300 of the cars can still be seen on the UK's roads. The vehicle was known for its good reputation, comfortable driving experience, and flexible seating system. However, it did suffer from issues with industrial relations, cost-cutting, and build quality towards the end of its production. Despite this, many owners still have a deep affection for the ADO-16 and continue to enjoy driving them. The 1100 Club offers support and advice for owners of the vehicle, which is known for its character and easy maintenance. China's PAN backs up world record in relays by winning 100 free at World Championships. Associated Press. Pan Jianla of China won the men's 100-meter freestyle at the World Aquatics Championships in Doha, Qatar. Pan, who had previously set a world record in the swimming relays, finished with a time of 47.53 seconds to take gold. The silver medal went to Alessandro Maresai of Italy, while Nander Namath of Hungary won the bronze. Jensen Brooksby, an American tennis player, has his whereabouts suspension cut. He can play in March. Associated Press. Jensen Brooksby, an American tennis player, will have his doping suspension reduced from 18 months to 13 months, according to the International Tennis Integrity Agency, ITIA. The suspension will be backdated to the date of the third missed test. Brooksby's ban was originally set to end in January 2025. The ITIA and the World Anti-Doping Agency determined that Brooksby's degree of fault should be reassessed. The 23-year-old player said he was relieved to be able to return to the sport he loves after a nightmare 13 months. Why pets are eating as well as humans. BBC. The market for luxury pet food is growing as more dog and cat owners opt for human-grade pet food. In the US and Europe, new regulations mean that human-grade pet food must be manufactured according to the same standards as ready-to-eat human food products. Brands such as Tugs, Smalls, The Farmer's Dog and Elmet are offering nutrient-rich pet food that resembles human food. The pet food industry is relatively new, earlier in the 20th century, pets were fed kitchen scraps. The industry grew following the launch of commercial pet food companies in the 1950s. A defining moment in the shift towards alternative pet food came in 2007 when a global recall of commercial pet food made owners more wary of the ingredients in pet food. Luxury pet food brands offer a range of specialized ingredients and diets, including raw feeding and gluten-free options. Brands are leveraging precise positioning to appeal to pet owners who want the best for their pets, with terms such as human-grade, natural, grain-free and holistic. Julian Assange, Australia wants WikiLeaks founder back home. Deutsche Welle. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has called for the release of Julian Assange from legal pursuit by US and UK authorities. Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, is currently being held in London and facing extradition to the US on charges of espionage. The Australian Parliament passed a motion on Wednesday calling for Assange to be returned to Australia. Assange's brother has warned that if extradited to the US, he will be cut off from his family and face a horrific prison system. Assange is accused of publishing classified documents that revealed US secrets about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The two dates Albanese has to decide, his wedding and the election. The Sydney Morning Herald. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has announced his engagement to Jody Hayden, and the news has been met with overwhelming positivity in Parliament. The announcement has given a boost to Albanese and his Labour Party, who have been struggling in the polls. While there may be concerns that the wedding could distract Albanese from his duties, it is unlikely to hurt Labour's chances in the upcoming election. The timing of the wedding is uncertain, but it will need to be carefully planned to avoid any political risks or negative media attention. Well, my dear viewers, it seems like we have quite a mixed bag of news today. 
From Australia's concerns over China's influence in the Pacific Islands to the impact of AI on human behavior in tennis, there's a lot to unpack. And let's not forget Japan's nominal GDP outgrowing China's for the first time in 46 years, calls for Julian Assange's freedom, the termination of a Pakistani cricketer's contract, the escalating tensions on the Korean peninsula, and even some news about luxury pet food. Oh, and let's not overlook the Australian Prime Minister's engagement announcement. Now, let's dive into these stories and see what we can make of them. Australia's concerns about China's influence in the Pacific Islands seem to be a case of the pot calling the kettle black. While China has been successful in gaining political influence through infrastructure and investment, Australia's response has been criticized for being heavy-handed. It's important for Australia to recognize that it still holds significant influence in the region through its aid and development programs. Perhaps a more collaborative approach, focusing on the island state's priorities, such as development and climate change, would be more effective. In the world of tennis, it seems AI technology is not only improving accuracy but also changing human behavior. The introduction of the Hawkeye ball tracking system has led to fewer mistakes by umpires. However, it has also caused officials to call serves that were out, in. This raises interesting questions about the role of AI in fields beyond sports, such as medicine, where algorithms may increasingly overrule human judgment. It's something to keep an eye on. Now, let's talk about Japan's nominal GDP outgrowing China's for the first time in 46 years. This is quite a significant shift and suggests that Japan is starting to turn inflationary while China is experiencing deflationary pressure. Economists believe this deflationary pressure in China is likely to continue and exert downward pressure on global prices. So, if you're looking for some cheaper goods, maybe keep an eye on China. Moving on to the high-profile case of Julian Assange, it seems Australia's Prime Minister is making a firm call for his freedom. The Australian Parliament has voted overwhelmingly to call on the United States and Britain to release Assange, with the Prime Minister stating that Assange was simply doing his job as a journalist. Thank you for tuning in.